leaving the European Union. Europe is ready to start the divorce process even today. Do come in, have a seat. Please don't be concerned, we'll sort all this out. This is a familiar story for anyone working in family law. As the years go by, a troubled relationship becomes more and more bitter. One party feels controlled by the other. It may be too many rules about who you can and can't see. Maybe it's regulations about the size and shape of your banana. Maybe they're fobbed off with, we'll talk about this tomorrow. Maybe they're increasingly embarrassed by their partner. One side may try and save the union by asking for marriage counselling. Agreements are thrashed out on emergency breaks and special statuses. All to prove that Brussels still listens. But then comes the point when nothing is enough. The marriage is doomed and ultimata and tantrums are the order of the day. I will not accept that we have to be endlessly blackmailed by Great Britain. They cannot mess around with all of Europe for months on end. And so it comes. The crisis. Something snaps. Maybe it's a text message from an adulterous lover. Maybe it's an economic collapse which threatens to engulf the Eurozone. In a fit of decisiveness, one party packs their bags and leaves straight into the arms of their lawyer, all the bitterness unleashed. The reason you're so upset, the reason you're so angry, has been perfectly clear from all the angry exchanges this morning. You, as a political project, are in denial. And then begins the lengthy legal process. No prenup here, just a simple divorce clause, Article 50, buried deep in the small print. Negotiations take years. Instead of directing your energy into all those new exciting hobbies you dreamed of, you're consumed with your case. Will you still have access to the children or the single market? You worry that you'll end up paying vast amounts of alimony. Anyone who wants to leave this family can't expect to lose their responsibilities whilst keeping all their privileges. That you'll be stuck on the outside, like an EEA member paying out huge amounts to someone who no longer cares about you and still does all the things that annoy you. They made their choice, and now we see the consequences. The anxieties Britain faces now will be recognised by any divorcee. Suddenly your financial security evaporates. The person you shared your life with suddenly becomes a devious and steely negotiator who wants to take you to the cleaners. And what about all those new relationships and supportive friends you thought you had? Suddenly they're nowhere to be found. Some of them are even flirting with your ex. Scotland did not let you down. Please, I beg you, cher collègue, do not let Scotland down now. Life can feel very lonely. When it comes to party invitations, you may find yourself at the back of the queue. A 40-year relationship cloven in two. The burst of confidence that spurred you to make your decision may feel like a bit of a wobble when the air clears. Mr Johnson, you fought for Brexit. Aren't you responsible for implementing it? Wouldn't have, wouldn't have worked without him. Come on. The world outside a relationship can feel like a very scary place. But as a divorce lawyer, I see the positive outcomes. We are sad about the way the vote turned out. But that's no reason to be especially nasty in negotiations. Often people really flourish. They find exotic new partners across the globe. They come out leaner and more confident, ready to take on the world and win. It's hard to know what will happen. 
If there's a lesson from divorce, it's that anything is possible. It usually comes down to money, and the lawyers always win.